Good evening, Flosstube. It's your girl Lori, also known as Sharky Stitcher on this channel and on Instagram. This is my channel where we talk about the cross-stitching obsession. So yeah, glad to have you guys here. We've got a fair bit to talk about tonight. Uh, just a quick overview. <laughs> I have a fabric closet. Or I guess you should call it a fab fabric wardrobe since it's, you know, a piece of furniture not like built into the wall. But whatever. I have a good hidey hole now for all my fabric, so that's super exciting. So I'll kind of show you guys that, talk about how I built it, show you how I haven't organized all that fun things. Um, I've got some fun fabric that I dyed, which you guys, if you're following me on Instagram, uh, you already know what's, what's going on back here. So that's fun. Uh, I will be attending a retreat next year, stitchy related retreat. So that's going to be super fun. And then let's see what else we got. Um, a little bit of haul, not much. Mostly the haul is buying floss for stuff that I have in my two kit up pile. Um, my fabric closet um, project, basically, I went through all my fabric and I'm ironing it and it inspired me because I'd get to a piece and I'm like, ooh, this might be a good piece for this design that you're starting to kit up or this piece might be good for this de design that you're kitting up. So I've got a little pile of like, well, not little, I have a big pile of little zippy containers like this where I've got a couple charts set aside and I'm getting like the Krennix, the beads, you know, random things for casually kitting up. I have a huge pile of those. So I'm trying to pull out some of the ones that um, I have maybe more stuff for or are calling to me a little bit louder. And I'm going to try and dig through my stash of fabric to find fabric for them. Because it's always fun when you don't have to buy fabric because you already have it. <laughs> and that is the perk to hoarding. <laughs> that tends to happen more often than not. And then I'll show you guys my whips like usual. Um, and some new starts, things like that. So yeah, anyways, let's get into the fabric closet first. So first things first, um, this is basically a dresser. Uh, it was in my brother's bedroom once upon a time. It is not like solid wood. It is that kind of particle board, but it, you know, it's from back in the day when they made that a little bit better, a little bit sturdier. So it still serves a decent purpose. I did think about getting rid of it for a while because basically when it was still a dresser with all the drawers, I was basically keeping craft supplies in there. And then it occurred to me that I've had stuff in drawers that I've never even opened for like over a year. So I'm like, why do I even have it? Obviously I don't need it if I haven't missed it for over a year. So I systematically went through the drawers and like emptied them and everything that was slightly not fun. <laughs> but the way this particular drawer or dresser is, the inside's basically all hollow. So once I removed the drawers, there was just like basically a couple like pieces of wood here in the front, like for framing purposes. And then there was a couple like very, you know, flimsy boards that were in between. So I did minimal ripping outage. Like I did it all with a handsaw, a hammer and elbow grease. <laughs> so like, yeah, it didn't take too much. I finished the inside, like primed it and everything. And then basically I hung a curtain rod through the top and I put like, I screwed in like some wood underneath it just to give it some support because you know, I have a lot of fabric just picking up my bin that my fabric used to be in. Let me kind of show it to you. Before all of my fabric lived here. Yes. And so just picking this thing up, I was like, oh wow, uh, is that bar going to take all of that? So I added a couple extra supports on the ends and I also added some like picture framing wire in the middle and strung it up just to kind of add a little bit of support. I don't think it really needs it though because it's a really sturdy like curtain rod. So like, or not curtain rod, basically it's, it's for closets. So clothes are supposed to hang on. So it's sturdy, you know, and I gave it a good pull, you know, once I got it in there. So I think it'll do the trick, but I do have some, I went, as I was picking through fabrics, I realized I have a lot. <laughs> and so I made a little pile to get rid of. So I'm probably going to be posting those on my Instagram, trying to get rid of them. And then eventually I'll go to eBay if I have to. I prefer not to just cause you know, eBay likes to take a chunk of things. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'll probably start posting a few of them. See if I can get rid of some of this stuff. Cause I have a lot and yeah, 
it was a little bit excessive. But let me give you a closer look at how um, the closet is organized. So, da -da -da -da. <laughs> okay, so I decided to start with um, rainbows. So these fabrics that are on this one here are all like pretty much every color. Rainbows, you know, self-descriptive. A lot of these are the pride fabrics from Mystic Fabrics. They do pride fabrics every June. So this one's from uh, Fiberlicious Show Me Fibers. I'm not going to go into too much of brands and things like that. If something catches your eye, leave a comment and I'll try and figure out which one it was. Um, and then the next one, this one is multicolor. So it's like at least two colors, but I couldn't decide, you know, which category it went into. Basically, I organized them by the rainbow for the most part. But yeah. Uh, the next hanger, this one makes me laugh a little bit. This one is hot colors. So basically, I don't have very much red, orange, or yellow, so they all went on one hanger. <laughs> So, yeah, these are my hot colors. I don't have very many, which I knew that, so, but yeah. Then we've got greens. I did not have as much green as I thought I did. I guess I have more blue-green, but, you know, these are, these are my greens right here. Then blue, basic blue. I also didn't have as much of this as I thought I did, but here they are. And then this is a big hanger. This is the blue green. I basically loosely called this ocean colors. I have a lot of ocean colors <laughs> because if y'all have been here for a while, you know that I like to stitch my mermaids. So I gotta have stuff to stitch them on. So yeah, I have a lot of the blue green. I almost, this is pretty heavy. So I'm actually thinking of splitting this one up a little bit. Another thing I'm thinking of doing is getting like some spray paint or something and color coding the hangers. But spray paint's kind of pricey for me to buy the entire rainbow. It's like, is it worth it just to spray a hanger? I don't know. Purple. You guys know I have to have a lot of purple because I love my purples. That's a pretty heavy hanger, but I do have more blue-green, it seems. Then, neutrals. I had more neutrals than I thought. And I think I might have a couple uses for these two here already. And I pressed most of these because one of the reasons I was drawn to the idea of starting myself a closet is I like no wrinkles in my fabric. So like when you store it all folded up, you get those lovely square wrinkles, which I hate. <laughs> this hanger is all Da Vinci. This is my favorite color by Picture This Plus. Look at it. Isn't it pretty? I just love it. So these are all my pieces of Da Vinci. They got their own hanger because I love it. Then I've got a couple hangers and I'm like, what was I doing there? And I think it was just like, I didn't know where else to put things. So yeah, this is just one single piece. I don't know. I'll put that somewhere. Green maybe, I guess. Then this one, I, these are all small cuts, like basically a fat eighth, I guess you'd say, or like chunks of other pieces that I've cut. So these are all small cuts. I have a lot of these actually. These will be nice for like some of the smaller, like the Mirabilia Pixies and stuff. It's like, cause I think that's, this is the right size for that. But yeah, random colors, but I, this is sorted by size. And I have a few other hangers that are organized by size. This one, these are pieces of fabric that I think have a home. <laughs> so you will see this piece probably again at some point. You, if you look on my Instagram, you've already seen it. <laughs> but there is a new Bella Filipina coming out that I think this will work for. And this is a half yard. This is the piece that I bought when I was actually at the Under the Sea Fabric Store down in San Antonio last November. So not 100% sure it's going to go for the piece, but I'm pretty, the floss toss is looking mighty nice. So we'll get into that a little bit more later. This hanger, I don't know what I was going for. These were like just fabrics that I didn't know what else to do with. There's a few small cuts on here just because the small cut hanger was getting kind of heavy. So I put a couple of them on here. And this is a weird, this is the piece that um, was left over. I had to buy a full yard of At The Pond for my poison garden, my Chatelaine design. And this was the bit that was left after I cut off what I needed for the design. And it's just a weird shape. So weird shape hanger. That and this weird printed fabric. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I wasn't expecting it to be four quadranty. I thought it was going to be like a piece, but there's that. <laughs> and then 
This is another random cut. Like this, I think, was maybe like a full yard, but I've cut pieces of it off for random things. And I might use it for like the reindeer, the um, Nora Corbet reindeer type things. Did a floss toss on it. It looks interesting. Okay, this is just, I think, a random piece here because I have a, my last hanger is sorted by size and this are my half yard cuts. And I have more than I thought, and this is heavy, so I put one of them here. That's uh, under the sea fabrics. Uh, do, 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 something forest. Enchanted forest, yes. Okay, so these are all my half yard cuts. And I have some ideas for some of them. But that's what's nice about this. I can pull things out and look at things a lot easier and not forget that I have certain colors because they're just easier to look at. So. And then I have a bin here for like ornament size cuts or like other just random weird size cuts. And then I got another bin under here that's got like picture framey type things. So there's that. So yeah, I'm excited to have that. I'm very pleased with how it turned out. I do kind of go back and forth on wanting to put like, I don't know, like a lid <laughs> or a way to close this. I kind of like being able to see it, but at the same time, I'm like, will dust or like moths or something get in there? I don't know, but um, not worrying about it right now. So, but yeah, there's my fabric closet, yay. And then let's see, the Stitchy Retreat. I am going to the Chatelaine Retreat uh, with the Queen City Stitch Retreat, so that's exciting. That's next July. Uh, I think 48 people are going or something like that. So once I know more details, you know, on things, I'll let you know. I know we're doing kind of, we could pick a, um, a workshop to do and there's four of them and they're basically organized by stitch type. So like you could do a Jessica stitches, a road stitches, a eyelet stitches. And what was the fourth one? Uh, rice stitches. Yeah. And I selected my number one was Jessica because I thought, oh, that's the one that I probably need the most practice on. It's one of the more complicated stitches. But when I got to actually looking at them, I'm like, there's a lot of girly colors in that one. So I decided I would rather go for the road stitch. It's my favorite stitch anyways. <laughs> and I like the colors in that one. So I decided I'd rather do the road stitch one. So that's what I signed up for. But um, yeah, that's going to be happening next year. So I'll probably end up making like a bigger trip out of it with my son. Like we'll probably go to Myrtle Beach or uh, Charleston. I don't know. The beach somewhere. I'll, I'll be that close to the ocean. I will have to go and say hi to it. So I'm overdue for my vitamin C anyways. So but yeah, that's exciting. And then... Um, my fabric dyeing. So this piece of fabric here is for the Firefly Fairies, which is a lavender and lace design. And it calls for you to dye or bleach specifically your fabric. So this is a piece of Fathom by Picture This Plus. And I found it when I was doing my ironing and I was like, hmm, that'd be good for Firefly, fly, 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 <laughs> Firefly Fairies. And I had been digging through, hang on, let me drop this right here for a minute. I had been digging through my lavender and lace designs. I'm on a lavender and lace kick because I've had several lavender and lace designs in my stash for a good long while to this very moment have not started one. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm like, you need to start one, you know, like, come on. There's so many I want to do. I like the Celtic late, not, not the Celtic late. Well, I guess they are all the Celtic ladies because it started, started out. The first one was like Celtic Noel or something. And then there's the seasonal ones that follow. Those are pretty popular. I think I have one or two of them. I can't remember. Those are fun to see people converting. So, um, and then I have, uh, spirit and earth dancer. Those are like the native American type designs. I have also sitting here the fabric, um, the angel of the sea. She does a lot of angels. So I think I'm going to start that one soon. And then I also want to start, let's see, there's the Celtic banner. I think I've always kind of liked that design, but just for some reason, haven't 
haven't started it yet, but here's the Firefly Fairies. And with these designs, they're not discontinued, but the designer has no longer with us. She's passed away, but her friend took over the company. I'm thinking this is correct. If you know otherwise, feel free to leave a comment down below. But apparently they are not right now producing the patterns. Uh, the friend of the designer holds the copyright and has stated before that they will start printing them again, but apparently that's been said for years now. So these are harder to find, but they're not necessarily discontinued. You can find them easier than like some of the like super, like super outrageous priced Mirabilia's, you know, like if you look on eBay, you know, usually they come up every now and then. Um, this one I've had a while though, but what's fun is, as you can see on this, uh, I remember when this came out, it was like people were losing their minds because it was like, oh my God, you have to dye your fabric. <laughs> and I was always kind of game for it, but I always found this fabric color to be a little bit boring. And I remember I paused on doing this one just because, you know, you have to do work, <laughs> you know, before you start it. And the way I read, because this comes with the directions for how to you know, do the dyeing in here. And the way she worded it, it almost sounded like you had to use this fabric to get that effect. Like maybe another fabric wouldn't bleach the same way. I don't know. So I, I was kind of nervous. So I did a patch test on this piece of fabric right here in the corner. And I was like, yeah, that looks yellowy and very dusty. So let's go for it. So, but when I did this test, I noticed, like, I only did, like, a little bit of the corner, but as you can see, it spread. So, I'm like, okay, good to know. <laughs> Less is more when it comes to bleach. You can always bleach it more if you decide you didn't go far enough, but once you've bleached it, you can't unbleach it. So, I ended up doing two passes with this. And basically, the directions were to get your fabric wet and get a bowl with a flat bottom and like put it on top of an old nasty towel and get some other towels and stuff like that. And to lay the middle of your fabric like on top of the flat part of the bowl and get a mix of 50-50 bleach water and just kind of start brushing it on. And as it ran down the sides of the bowl, you would see kind of a star pattern forming with the concentration being mostly in the middle. And with the 50-50 bleach, like at first, like the green went away and the fabric just looked dark, but then it lightened up like a little bit. You can kind of see some tonal changes. Maybe if I bring it a little closer, like this spot here is kind of what the 50-50 bleach did, whereas this is like more of the full bleach here. And when I first did it, the, fa the pattern also comes with like a template that you can like copy and like cut out so you can kind of see where everything's going to land rough estimate. <laughs> and I decided like I wanted the fairies to be a little bit higher up and I wanted the, um, like trying to explain this. So like the way I had bleached it, like the light was going to stop like here. And I'm like, well, the light source is on their faces. So I want the light to be higher than them. So like it's shining down on them. So I decided to go a second round and I took a little bit more liberty with the application of the bleach. So I had a spray bottle and that's how I got Oh, some of these orb effects here. I also used like 50-50 bleach on some of these orbs. And then when I did the full bleach, because you do the 50-50 bleach, once you get that to like the point that you wanted at, you rinse everything. And then you go back in and you just paint the middle with like full on bleach to get that, you know, really brightness there. And I can't remember what DMC, but they said there's a DMC color that you should like try to compare it to. I can't remember what number it is, but... Um, so I basically repeated the cycle a second time. And when I got to the full bleach part, I took a little bit of liberty. Like I noticed when I was using a paintbrush, I was trying to give it more like of a star shape. Cause when, when I did it the first time, it looked more flower petally, like kind of like, um, like this bit here, like it was very rounded. So I'm like, I want some more pointy stripes. So I got a toothpick and that's how I got like these lines out here they're a little bit skinnier you can kind of see almost like oh, yeah right there a little bit just to change the shapes a little bit and I used the very end of the paintbrush dipped in full bleach to get these little dots basically throughout here because I wanted it to look like 
you know, like a firework almost, less so than a flower petal. So that's how that worked. But I'm happy with how it turned out. I know it's going to sound bad too, but I was kind of okay with taking the risk on <laughs> Fathom because it's by Picture This Plus <laughs> and it's just a solid color. So it wasn't like each piece of fabric is a work of art that I was desecrating. I'm like, it's just a straight dye job. So <laughs> if I decide I don't like it, I can order a new piece of Fathom and we'll be okay. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's how that worked. Um, that one, and I'm probably, it's probably going to be my next start because I'm excited. I want to see how things come out. I've already printed out my working copy and highlighted where I want to work. <laughs> so I like to make my game plans when I start new projects. So yeah, that's exciting. Uh, and let's see, digging through some other things that I decided I want to start soon. Um, one is this little witch by Nora Corbet. Cleo is her name. I'm going to stitch her without the wing because it looks kind of like a hand to me. So I kind of like the idea of not doing the wing. I think it's supposed to be a wing at least. And she's on the small side. I'm trying to get more smalls in my rotation just because then you get quicker finishes. Okay, another small. This one I, I kind of resisted at first because I was like, why do you want to stitch this? <laughs> A lot of people are stitching these and it's one of the reindeer from Nora Corpay, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I like this one because she looks fierce. So this is Dancer. I think she's cool. She's got whisper in her tail and she's got lots of like crystal treasures on her. So, you know, I'm down with that. So, but I don't know what color I want to stitch her on. There's a couple colors I've floss tossed her. I, I'm calling it a her, you know, I don't know what it is, but, and this is part of the haul. I've, oh, I got the threads. There's a lot more pink in this design than I had thought. Like, look at that hot pink. Like, wow. But it's kind of fun looking. There's some silks. I had already had those. I think I got that when I got the pattern. Some metallics and the treasures all stuck together. <laughs> So yeah, that's, I don't know. I'm really feeling this one and I don't know. I'm kind of wanting to do like Christmas in July type stuff. So speaking of which, I got another Christmas, Christmas design uh, right here. Yeah. So this one is a Mirabilia. This is Miss Christmas Eve, lady in a tree dress. <laughs> I have some fabric I've ordered that I'm thinking she might look cool on. If not, um, I got another piece in there that I'm like, eh, that might be cool. This is another one that like, oh yeah, Christmas, like red and green. But then when I bought the threads, like there's a lot of pink in there. Like, dang, optical illusion. Do you guys ever feel that? Like sometimes you buy the threads for a design and you're like, really, this color? Where's that go? <laughs> and then the little voice in your head just has to whisper, trust the process. So I'm trying to trust the process. Okay. Uh, let's go back to that big piece that I was telling you when I showed you there. There's a new Bella Filipina coming out. I don't have a picture, but when I saw her, I was like, oh my God, she's fabulous. And her name's Mascara Festival Queen. She looks like a showgirl or like, I don't know. She, she just looks fun kind of Mardi Gras-ish, like it's a, it's a festival in the Philippines, so I'm excited to learn more about it. But what really kind of drew me to her is, oh my God, the colors are wild. And here's kind of a bouquet, a floss bouquet. <laughs> so lots of bright colors, super fun. Uh, the recommended, I do have the recommended fabric which is, I believe, Unicorn Dreams by um, Be Stitch Me, which, yeah, that would work. But I was kind of like, she's wild and the fabric's wild. And I don't know, I, that and I also don't like being told what fab fabric to use. <laughs> I like kind of, let me figure out for myself what I'm going to use. And so, I don't know, I was just digging around and I really like how it looks with this piece. Because then this pops more, but this is still fun. And this is a half yard, and I really like the idea of using up my half yards. You do need a little bit more than a fat quarter for um, 
the Festival Queen. So it excites me, the thought of being able to use fabric from Stash. And I don't know, I think the colors look really good. I did order the beads, the specialty threads, like the metallics and stuff like that, and the chart from Under the Sea Fabrics. And I don't know when that's being shipped. Cause like I just got my invoice and paid for it the other day. So I don't know when that's coming in again. I don't have a picture to show you, but if you've been like on Instagram and that you've probably seen her, she looks super fun. So yeah, I'm excited about her. Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, one other thing I wanted to talk about. Um, I don't know if you guys know, if some of you guys are Mirab Mirabilia fans, maybe you don't know, but there are freebies on the website um, for Mirabilia. A lot of them are like cherub designs. And I was flipping through, I have this book of like freebies. And I'm like, I've had these printed for a while and I've never stitched any of them. But then I got to looking online and I saw that there's some I don't have. So I ended up going back there to see like, oh, let me print off this one with the violin, which I don't have, like a little cherub baby with a violin. And that's when I noticed there's a design that I have wanted from Mirabilia that is available as a freebie and it's the hula girl Leilani I think is her name let's see yeah Leilani and she's a little hula dancer and she's free so I was like heck yeah let me get that so I'm kidding her up a little bit and I can't show you a picture obviously because you know the thing that I printed out is the chart so I'm not showing that to y'all even though it's a freebie but yeah like if you didn't know that was available go and get that there's also a um it's a design not too well known. It's like a white peacock. And she released that on her website as a freebie. It's dated 2023, so maybe that's a newish thing. Apparently it was like a super rare, I don't know the story behind it or anything, but yeah, there's a white peacock. It looks pretty cool. It uses some silks. Um, I don't have a picture, obviously, but um, I'm thinking about stitching that one just because I love me a peacock and a white one. That's different. So yeah, just wanted to mention that. Get some free charts on Mirabilia for you. Especially if like you're new to stitching and you wanna try some stuff. And yeah, just be warned, even the small Mirabilias will use like a lot of like silks, beads, treasures, things like that, which I'm okay with because I love all that. So, but just be forewarned. And of course you can always, you know, sub make substitutions. You don't have to use the silks. You don't have to use beads or anything like that, but they're so fun. <laughs> yeah, I encourage you to try them. Okay, so let me get into my whips. So, first thing I'll show you is, let me show you Urduja, just because she's in my hands. <laughs> and uh, she's smaller and she'll be easier to show you. So this is a mermaid by Bella Filipina. And she's fun royal colors. And here she is. I had started her. And it was a very sad, pathetic start. Like I had like an orange S shape. So I decided I needed to get a more solid start on her. And my goal was to finish these colorful fins on her hips. So I got to that point. And this fabric is, it's a mystery by Bee Stitch Me. So I think she's going to look so cool. She's very fun, bright colors. And I'm enjoying her. And I'm glad I have a more solid start. Like you can kind of tell this is a mermaid's tail. That's kind of how I like my starts to be to where you can like look at it and be like, okay, that looks like a this, you know, if you squint. <laughs> All right. So the next thing I'm going to show you is my poison garden, which if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen my poison garden, but this is where I stopped. I was very excited to get this one started. Do, 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 do. This design, oh, I'm just looking at it and I'm like, <laughs> um, when I started stitching this design, I got so like giddy cause I had been searching for my fabric for this design for like two years. Cause I wanted it to be like a certain way. And I finally found it. So when I started stitching it, it was almost like seeing a celebrity in real life because I've seen so many pictures of this design. So many people are stitching it and it's because it's so gorgeous. So take a look at this oh gosh it's so pretty and i did start beating i couldn't help it which the sparkle's showing up pretty and pretty well this one's super fun too because like the middle's got a lot of over one in it but yeah 
I didn't really have a fixed goal with this one. I knew I wanted to get like some beading done because as you can see, some of the beading in the center is a little bit heavy, which <laughs> excites me. And I do have a special bead I'm putting in the center. It calls for a flower, but I'm gonna be doing a skull because it's a poison garden. And these plants can kill. <laughs> which this, um, this garden is based on an actual garden. I think it's England where it's at, where there's literally like a garden full of poisonous plants. And there's a sign on the gate with a skull and crossbones that says these plants can kill, which is incorporated into this design. So I think that's cool. So I thought it was appropriate that I would put a skull in the center. Um, I like the vitrol heart, not heart, um, flower, but it's in the center of a lot of chatelaines. So I want my chatelaines to have a little bit more like distinction with the centers there. And I used the flower on the center for Serengeti because I couldn't think of anything better and it looked really pretty there. So <laughs> I just went ahead and did that. And then here's my new star and there's not much to show you right now. As you can see, there's just some, some or orange, orange or yellow. Either one could go. This is Lakapati. She is the deity of the harvest or what specifically does it say? Deity of fertility and she gave agriculture to mankind. But, oh, I love those royal colors. And what's really fun is, like, those um, grains sticking out of that basket, like, they're beaded and stuff, so that means they have texture. And that always excites me a little bit. Because <laughs> I like my stitching to be, like, kind of textured. That's why I like whisper thread and stuff like that. So, but I'm not going to pull her down just because there's not a whole lot done on her. I did pull out, like, all my yellow clay by Kim's <laughs> just to fit the theme there. Speaking of clay by Kim... Um, I did make a purchase and it's a, another fairy door. I have five now and I never thought I would get a fairy door like this, but it happened and I managed to snag one. This is a peacock feather. <laughs> I love the peacock designs. Like they're just fun, but I didn't think I'd get a peacock door because she doesn't do the doors as often as other things. And she doesn't do peacocks that often either, but she did a round of peacocks. And I didn't have a peacock door, so I got me one. And this was weird the night that this went up. Anybody that also hunts clay by cam, I have not been hunting much lately because I've got a lot, you know. So um, I have not been buying them. I did just buy one, <laughs> but we'll talk about that later. But the night these went up, I was kind of intrigued, you know, because I'm like, maybe there's something up there, you know. Actually, I think I knew she was putting doors up and I wanted a door. But then that night I didn't set an alarm and I realized like, I think I left pole dance class and I was like, oh crap, I forgot the peacock doors were going up. And I thought, well, let's check the website and see what I missed. And if you know Clay by Kim things, everything sells out in like one to two minutes, you know, like you're lucky if you catch anything, if you're there right at the time that everything drops. And this is literally an hour later. So I was like, oh crap, you missed it. Well, I go to the website, here this sits. And I, at first I was like, am I seeing this right? It looks like it's available. And I'm like, usually like any single object that is clay, boom, gone, you know? So I was like, am I tripping? So I clicked on it and I was like, it says, buy so i did it was kind of glitchy when it went through like i was like this seems glitchy i don't know but then it went through and i kind of sat there for a minute and i'm like did that just happen did i get a clay by cam clay object an hour afterwards so i don't know what happened there either everyone which i've never seen it before where everybody's overlooked every clay thing so i don't think that's a, a thing i don't know if maybe she does have a rule where if you buy two of the same thing like She'll cancel the order, but she usually limits it to two. So I don't know, but I'm like, did they relist it? Did they, it, I don't know what happened. I don't know, <laughs> but that's never happened before, but I'm like, I guess it was meant to be mine. So I got me a peacock door. Yay. So I do need a door that's got one. She does them where like, there's a little pet door, like a little tiny door inside the door. I need to get one like that. I need one that's got like flowers on it. So I have a Halloween one, I have a Christmas one, I have a snow one. Did I show you guys this one? 
I got this one around St. Patty's Day and I thought it was pretty because of the rainbows. And I like the gold flakes on the door. I think that's fun. But yeah, I like the doors. Didn't think I would have a peacock door, but now I do. But yeah, that, that blew my mind. I'm like, am, am I hallucinating? <laughs> You know, so I don't know. Uh, let's see what else we got. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's pretty much it, I think. I think we covered it all. Oh, I guess um, the other Clay by Cam that I ordered, she posted like tide pool, sea creature type dragons, and I like the colors, and she changes the colors on that a lot. So, like, I think I have, let me see, one, two, three, four five uh, six i have six tide pool dragons right now so i guess that makes the seventh i could be miscounting too but they're all so different like none of them look the same it's just that they're an aquatic theme and you guys know i'm kind of a aquatic nerd so had to get it so and i still got it <laughs> you know because that the software's changed a little bit so i was like am i still gonna be able to get them but apparently i did but i'm not too worried about it you know like i have plenty like i've said i just buy them when she posts things that like i'm like ooh, i don't have that i need to add that to my collection so but yeah that's pretty much it for tonight so i'll probably be doing like a clip on building this thing for my instagram with some more pictures and things like that um I'm still trying to post basically monthly for the most part. So as I get new starts going, my stitchy bug has been pretty strong, if you can't tell. So let's push through with that, hopefully. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for tonight. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and I will see you guys next time. Bye.